What's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. And just for future reference, I apologize. This video is coming out a little late today. My whole block's power actually went out, so I had to completely re record. Last week, I had some audio issues, so these last two weeks, I've had pretty bad luck with recording, but that's okay. We'll still get it done here. We'll get it up before Monday, so you can be prepared for the markets. So, if you weren't tuned in last week, we had some pretty good setups. There was a FOMC meeting. And there was also a lot of digestion from earnings, especially in big tech sector. So it was a pretty crazy week, but there was a couple of good setups last week. Hopefully you guys caught it. SLV, which is exposure to silver, that did pretty good to the upside. We're looking at calls on that. And then McDonald's as well. Had a nice little pullback, but there's still a little bit more downside to go, to be honest. So you caught a, could have caught a little short-term gain on that. And then Pepsi didn't really do as good as I thought yet. But still, if you bought some time on that, you could probably still get a pretty good payout if you get a couple months of expiration and let it make a topping pattern. And usually I'm always going to recommend, you know, 30 to 60 days of expiration for any long term swing trades or really any swing trades in general. So I recommend doing that. You give contracts time to work. You give uh, time for the pattern to play out and there's less theta and time decay on those. So we're going to go ahead and get into the economic calendar this week, and then we'll get into this week's setups. And hopefully there'll be a couple of good ones just like last week. So Wednesday this week, we do have the CPI inflation data coming out. This is going to be a pretty crazy day, to be honest. Thursday, right after, we do have the producer price index, so another inflation gauge. I would say these two are probably the most important. For CPI, we definitely want to see inflation come down, especially if you want to see you know, the Fed eventually bring down interest rates again and not hold them up higher for longer. They do have a 2% inflation goal, and they've been pretty adamant on sticking to that 2% goal. So we'll definitely want to see that come down. Otherwise, we might see rates up higher for longer. So let's hope you know, for inflation to come down, that'd be good, you know, for consumers, it'd be good for us, you know, definitely don't like paying higher prices on anything. I would love to see it come down. Obviously, if it doesn't, you know, that's a pretty bearish case. I mean, you can still profit off that, but I would love, you know, for things to kind of go back to normal and, you know, prices on items to go back cheaper, gas, all that good stuff. So, and then eventually, you know, if it does come down, it, you know, hits the Fed's inflation goal, then, you know, maybe the markets can start going back to normal a little bit. Eventually, they're going to have to, you know, bring interest rates back down. But right now, we're still pretty far away from that. So that's for Wednesday and Thursday, our two most important days. And then Friday, we do have uh, the Michigan consumer sentiment. So that's our data sets for the week, just the CPI and the PPI, most importantly. And then Michigan consumer sentiment can move the market a little bit on Friday. All right. And for our setups here, we do have four different individual tickers we're looking at. We have two call setups on Snap and FCX, and then we have two put setups I'm looking at on LLY and RCL. So for Snap here, we do have a nice support here at 805. You can see it right here. So you got the nice support area right there. Ideally, I'd be looking for a reversal off this point. You can see that it bounced pretty good, closed up for about 4% on Friday. Your risk off level, if it you know were to not work out, would be under 805. And there's also a low under 786. So if 786 broke, that would kind of be your risk off area. And that could head back down to 732. And you see this little arrow I had pointed as because the last video I was showing you the risk off area, but I had to re-record it. So we'll just go ahead and keep that there. If it goes under that level, your risk off is that level. So that's your stop loss. And that would head down to 732 more than likely. This is that October 2022 level and that's pretty much like a max low so if it did get down there it's obviously a good reversal point as well it could bounce off that but you can see this 805 area is really strong support as well so you definitely want this holding price targets you're looking at you know this gap resistance and your gap resistance is directly at 893 you could probably call it you know nine dollars flat as well if it got up to there obviously there's a pretty good chance that it could reject off the it is a previous rejection point so we would need to see more from that if it was able to get over that obviously it could fill the gap maybe make a base off the gap resistance and then fill the rest but you know we'll have to see how it does when it gets up there that's just an ideal price target obviously it's not like a guarantee or anything but that is the next resistance point from this 805 area so snap i'm looking at calls here and like I said, your risk off is below 786. So if it goes under 786, you probably go ahead and stop out. If you really, you know, had some time on the contracts and you're swing trading this setup, 
Obviously, your risk off could be under 732, which is that, you know, this really, lo really, really low point. And that could be, you know, like a swing trade stop loss. But if you're looking at something more short term, your short term risk is under, you know, 786. So snap, looking at calls. Next, we're running to FCX. So FCX here has a really nice demand zone. You can see it's a rally based rally demand zone. And it comes from this area over here back in 2022. And you can see it bounced off there really nice, but as well, it's got this 200 SMA support. So you got your 200 SMA support bounced off that and demand previously coming back down, bounced off demand here short term and it closed up three and a half percent on Friday. But you can see it also closed back over the 200 SMA. So it is holding this 200 SMA really good. Uh, 200 SMA is usually a pretty good support area and it's kind of like a line in the sand on the daily time frame. So you do need to make sure this holds as well as the, the demand zone low. So if it went under demand zone low, obviously that's your risk off. If it went under, it probably, you know, flush, back test the low, and then try to go lower. And there's a pretty big gap here as well. So that would definitely need to be your risk off. For price targets, obviously if it's holding the 200 SMA as good as, as, good as, as it is, you do have a potential move up to 38.86. And that's this little resistance area right here. You can see you got a strong rejection candle there. We can even zoom in a little bit. You also have a drop base drop supply zone. And that comes from this little base candle right here. And that led to a pretty large sell imbalance. Came back up, almost hit it, but ended up making the rejection area just short at that 38.86 that we're focused on right here. So that could be a good price target. Obviously, you know, you don't have to shoot all the way up here and it's not going to get up here in a day or anything, but it is, a, it is a good price target to look out for. And this is your next resistance point. And then, like I said, your risk off for calls, obviously under demand zone low. And even uh, if it, you know, when they're maybe Friday's low on a day trade, you probably want to, you know, stop out for a day trade and wait for it to pull back into demand directly. Because if it went under Friday's low and you, let's say you, op you know, open a trade Monday and it went under Friday's low, it's probably going to flush back down to demand. And if you have short term contracts, that probably wouldn't be good for the contracts. You just have to, you know, kind of make your stop loss and risk off area and adjust depending on what kind of contracts you have, what the expiration is what kind of strike price you have, what the deltas are looking like, etc. So FCX here looking pretty good for a potential reversal. Obviously, FCX is exposed to copper and gold. So you're going to want to pay attention to the copper futures as well as the gold futures. And that will give you a pretty good insight into how this will move. And as well, that kind of plays into the US dollar. So you do need to see the dollar maybe come down or just chop around. If the dollar comes down, it's usually good for metals. So it's just something to keep in mind. And I said the same thing last week. You know, we wanted to see the dollar down or choppy for the, for the silver to move. And it pretty much did exactly that. And even though it held that major support, the dollar, uh, silver did, did pretty good still. I mean, it had a nice little two or three day rally, even broke over the resistance short term and then went back within it. So you could have made some pretty good money on silver last week. So I feel like this could be another good play. Just make sure the dollar stays down or stays choppy. And you know, this is, has pretty good potential. Just make sure you watch copper and gold. So FCX looking at calls. And next we're going into LLY here. So I actually already sent out an alert for June puts on this in the chat, but I really wanted to reiterate how good of a short this looks. We're going to go ahead and go into the four hour here with extended hours on. I wanted to show you this trend line. So we got this four hour trend line here. It's very steep. And if this breaks, there's a really good chance that this could flush out and just look how steep it is. So if this is able to get under the trend line, obviously that could take you straight down to that demand zone on the daily time frame. So that's a pretty good trend line to watch. It's very steep. LLY is like I'm very overbought here, but like just like a Pepsi and McDonald's last week, it's still in a breakout pattern. So, I mean, this is breaking out all time highs. It's very bullish and you do have to be careful shorting these, but if you get time on the contracts, you can give it time to play out. So if you get 30 to 60 days of expiration, that gives you plenty of time to, you know, kind of decide what your risk tolerance is. And also there's not as much upside risk just because, I mean, it just looks so overbought here. If you really wanted to have like a risk off area, it'd probably be like above like 440. So as long as it's not doing that and, you know, killing your contracts, this looks like a pretty good short. RSI on the daily it was over 80, so it was very high, and I'm pretty sure it's currently at 79, so it's very overbought in terms of RSI. Obviously, it's not it's not like a the most important indicator for overbought and oversold conditions, but it is a good little gauge if it gets way too overextended. I like looking at the, the RSI in extremes. So if it's extremely oversold and it's very low, or if it's very high, it's usually a good area to look for like a reversal point. But obviously, you want to you know, look at other stuff as well. Pay attention to your support and resistance. Look at your moving averages, etc. 
Yeah, I mean, this just looks ridiculous. So look at the weekly too. You look at the weekly, it already broke out the ascending triangle. So your 375 breakout was the trade if you wanted to go bullish here. I, I would never chase calls up here. And if I was, you know, an institution or Wall Street, I'd probably be unloading supply up here just because it's so overbought. So I had a really big breakout. I mean, the weekly just looks ridiculous. And I feel like this can really pull back. And your first price target, obviously, is that demand zone that I had drawn out. And that goes down to 399.26. You could probably just say 400 flat. 407 to 400 does need to break if you want to see this old resistance get hit. So eventually, you know, if it came, it could probably curl up about there. But if it can flush through that, your next price target is, you know, probably about the upper 300s. You know, about like 390, 375. That's LLY. Obviously, I already set up an alert on this, but I just want to reiterate, if nobody saw it, this could be a good name to watch for a short, looking very overbought. So LOY, I'm looking at puts. And maybe I could even look at a short-term put trade, like a day trade or something on this, you know, if the the sell the selling picks up and it looks good enough. Because right now, I only have June expiration, so, you know, it might take a little bit of time for them to pay out. But if I'm looking at short-term contracts and get a really good pullback from up here, those can pay really good. So we'll have to see. Maybe if it gets under Friday's low, that'd be a good point to look at a day trade for shorts. But otherwise, you know, maybe give this time, be patient, don't oversize all the way up here because this is not like an area you just want to, you know, go all in on because it's still, you know, in bullish momentum, still looking pretty bullish. But eventually, uh, this is definitely going to need a cool down. Next, we're looking at RCL. So RCL here, you can see it as 7630. That's your major resistance point. As well as you do have a massive supply zone here. So you got a rally base drop supply zone. And it just led to a very nasty sell imbalance. And then you also have this little gap below. The only thing that's a little bit risky about this is that Friday, it closed up about 5%. And as well, it closed with a nice full body candle. So, I mean, it's looking pretty bullish on the short term. But if you can, have your risk off above 76.30. And you know, if it broke out there, you could stop out. This is a really good risk to reward. As long as you have that 76.30 or above it as your you know, risk off or stop loss. Look how much downside it could get. And... If it can get the downside eventually, maybe get under Friday's low, you do have a gap fill potential here, and that would be pretty nice as well. For a short term, obviously, if you wanted to wait, if you want to wait for it to get under 73.49 or 73.50, which is this little short term resistance, that could be a good area to start looking at puts as well if you don't want to short all the way up here. That's if you just want to wait for a little bit more confirmation and be safe. Otherwise, you know, if you did want to try to catch this top here, your risk off should just be above 76.30. And then, you know, your price target could be that 79.50 or, you know, you could aim below it. But either way, your stop loss can be pretty tight. Uh, you can maybe even adjust for it going a little bit above that. But, you know, it just depends. D depends on sentiment. Depends on if the daily bar is going to close over the resistance or not. If it does that, that could probably be your risk off. But either way, look at pretty little overbought short term. And this could make a nice little put scalp or... A swing trade, obviously, you're going to go 30 to 60 days out and just keep the same risk off area at 76.30 or, you know, above it. So RCL here looking good for puts. You want to make sure that the travel sector is also pulling back, maybe like airlines and other cruise names. You want to see those come down as well. Next, we're going to SPY. So last week, we were focused on this supply zone. I'm pretty sure I mentioned I would not be looking at calls inside here, and it'd probably be a good idea to start, you know, looking at short ideas, looking for puts. And you can see exactly why it topped out here on Monday, had a nice upper shadow wick candle, closed pretty ugly. And then the next three days just sold off very heavily. And look exactly where it bounced. It bounced from that same RBR demand zone that we were focused on last week and the same RBR zone that we traded off last week as well. And it just pretty much did the same exact thing. So it pulled into, into demand, but actually gapped up a little bit heavier and just ran up straight on Friday. Just a crazy move. So maximum I can put us is that, you know, supply if it does get some upside here. And then maybe you can start looking at puts again once it gets up here, you know, once it gets up to 415s or so. But otherwise, I mean, I, I wouldn't just start entering calls right here. Maybe wait for it to get into supply. Then you could look at some puts or you can wait for it to, you know, dip back to 407.45 or this demand zone. This 407.45 used to be a pretty good area, I guess, if you wanted to short under that. But now that, you know, we've identified this demand zone, I really wouldn't short under 4745. I would wait for it to get under this demand zone. It's going to be about 401. Maybe you could even, you know, mark under 400 as a psychological level to start looking at puts. That's for, you know, a breakdown type of trade. Otherwise, you know, you could start looking at puts up here. Make sure the VIX is staying low. You can get cheap puts up here, buy time on it. 
and get time to work inside the supply zone. And, you know, sometimes it'll take a little bit longer. Sometimes I can just straight reject like this day right here or like these couple days. Just wait for it to get inside the supply. Like I said, buy inside demand, sell inside supply. So don't buy calls inside supply and don't buy puts inside demand. And make sure you have these marked on your chart. They're going to stay relevant until they go void. And when they go void, that's when price is starting to trade outside of them. So this supply would go void if it went over 418 and made a base. And then it was able to march higher, making, you know, new support off old resistance. And this demand zone would also go void if it went under 400 or, you know, 401 or so, and then started flushing. And that's usually uh, once you see a daily candle close under or over a supplier demand zone, that means the you know the liquidity is probably dried up and there's you know it's probably void and it's probably not going to work as good anymore so as for the spy like i said just wait for it to get inside supply you can start looking at puts again if you want to be bullish wait for it to get outside supply and then if you want to be bearish you know wait for it to get under demand zone low and then you could also you know maybe if it pulls back down into demand again you could look at calls again because it worked pretty good the last couple times so pulling it into demand right here bounced pretty hard pulling the demand right here bounce pretty hard and you kind of had to be quick but either way i mean it paid pretty good so just make sure you keep an eye on these zones like i said i wouldn't you know just take calls right here it's pretty close to supply still your risk to reward is not that great so maybe just wait on the spy and then also for seasonality here you can see in may it does average a pretty crappy move in the stock market i mean it's nothing great you can see may right here it's just a straight downtrend and there's a saying called sell in May and go away. And it's usually because, you know, Wall Street institutions are going on vacations. They're starting to, you know, summer trading gets a little bit slow. The volume dries up. The liquidity is not as good. So that's just something to keep in mind. And that's another reason why if it does get back in supply, you can maybe start looking at puts, you know, to hold through May as a hedge, at least for your portfolio. You know, if you're naturally like have a long term or, you know, you're naturally bullish, probably a good idea you know for may to have that hedge just in case because it usually does average a pretty decent pullback like i'm showing you right here and you can see i mean it's just straight straight down pretty much there's a couple bounces in the middle that it averages but otherwise in may and june it's kind of crappy so you do have to be careful with that like i said maybe look at a hedge next we're going into the qqq so last week we were just focused on that 321.51 and you can see it did close over it twice but I'm pretty sure I mentioned if it went back within 321.51, it would probably start going to the downside and head back to 313.68, which is this previous resistance. And I did exactly that. It didn't exactly reach the 313.68, you know, level for, for level to the exact. But either way, the same idea pretty much happened. You know, it got under 321.51, it closed and then had a nice little two-day sell-off. And you probably would have to identify the 321.51 flush on the short term in order to catch this move. So I have the same outlook. As long as it stays over 321.51, I feel bullish and I feel like it could head up to, you know, the 330s or so. Last week I mentioned it'd probably take a little bit. It wasn't just going to skip up to 330s or, you know, upper 320s. It's going to take some time. The VIX is kind of low still and it's going to need to make structure too. So you'll definitely need it to make structure. In order to do that, you need it to, you know, make a base off resistance in order to go higher and that's going to be that 321.51 so you want to see a base get made you want to see solid structure getting made off previous structure and that 321.51 comes from this area right here so it originated in august 2022 all the way over here and then you have a rejection here short term and then you have another rejection here short term and then you could see it i mean it even rejected the general area here so kind of got three or four different rejections on this resistance. So it's important that it gets over and it stays over and also makes a new structure on it. If we go to the one hour here, you can see there's a new little resistance slightly above it at 323.63. And that's coming from right here. So we will need to see price get over that as well. So make sure you mark that on your chart. Make sure you're not just buying calls, you know, aimlessly at this resistance, wait for it to get over, maybe wait for structure to be made, wait for pullbacks, and then, you know, you can trade back up to the 330s if it's able to do that. And the reason why I think, you know, the 330s can happen is because you have this kind of like this void area where there's no resistance, you know, from this 321.51, and then there's no, no resistance here. And then you have, you know, supply here at about 328, and then you have a major supply at the direct top, you know, about 330s. So that's kind of your free space between that, you know, 321.51 up to the 330s, it's kind of like a free space with no resistance. 
So that's why you want to see that base getting made off 321.50. And then maybe you could, you know, fill this free space up. But like I said, you want to see it kind of get up there slowly. I don't want to see it, you know, just skip up instantly. I want to see structure get made. I want to see something solid get made because if it gets, you know, overextended too fast, you know, we've seen what can happen when markets, you know, go up too fast. And, you know, it's kind of like what, what goes up must come down. So you do want it to see, kind of just keep it doing what it's doing here, just making a nice slow structure nice bullish bases and able to march higher slowly but surely especially if you're a swing trader obviously the quick gains are nice and you know it's it's pretty cool once you get some huge moves and it you know closes nice on the daily time frame but if it gets too extended that's when you kind of start having to be careful and take profits that's when wall street's going to start unloading supply taking profits as well and usually that results in a sharp reversal so if it can kind of just melt up here, that'd be perfect. It'd be good for swing traders and also kind of give your mind a little bit of ease and you don't have to worry about it getting overextended or anything. You got nice structure holding. So yeah, just make sure it's holding 321.51. Like I said, if it falls back within the 321.51 again, same outlook as last week, it'll probably pull back into 313.68. So that's your levels of focus. And then you also have that short term 323.63. So you need to get over that as well. Next, we're going into the IWM. So last week, I only had us up to the downtrend line maximum. So this is Friday's candle right here. And then Monday, I rejected super hard. And you can see exactly why. I mean, I just pulled directly into the trend line. You also have a little 50 EMA here. And then it did fall you know, a couple days into the 170.34 and the 168.19 area that I've pretty much had drawn out on my chart for a couple weeks now. And you can pretty much see why I've been saying not to, you know, buy puts inside support or near support because it can just snap back violently. So you want to wait, you know, for puts, you want it to get up to the downtrend line or you want to be looking at this 179.26. That's also a good area to look at puts, maybe even the 50 EMA as well. And then for bulls, if you want to see your structure get broken here, you do need to break out of the downtrend line and that can maybe take you up to 179.26. Otherwise, I can only put us at the downtrend line maximum again. So same thing as last week. So that's not really much, much risk to reward here. So I definitely wouldn't look at calls yet. Wait for it to break out of the downtrend line. Maybe even look at puts if you can get a similar rejection to the downtrend line like you had here Monday. So if you get a nice like upper shadow wick pushing down and there's clear sell pressure on the daily candle, Good area to start looking at puts and you just trade back down to this 170 area again keep trading at the resistance of the downtrend line and then you know making sure you're taking profit at the support and you definitely don't want a short inside support you want to wait for it to get under 168 if it gets under 168 that's breaking structure and that could take you down to 162.50 so you just want to be selective with what you're trading make sure you're marking these on your charts especially if you're new make sure you mark you know, what is this from February to March? So from February to March, that's your two points for the downtrend line, put an extension on it, and that gives you your downtrend line. So make sure you mark that, mark your 170s, mark your 168s, and then especially mark your 179.26. That's your major resistance that we re rejected off four, five, six times. So that's for the IWM. Just wait for it to break out if you want to get bullish. And then for bearish confirmation, just wait for a nice daily candle or a nice reaction to the downtrend line. That can give you a trade back down to 170.34. Next, we're going into the VIX. So last week, just insane. It actually did get up to 20, but it, it only closed at 20.08. So it wasn't really a very strong close over the psychological 20 I've been preaching about. I still have the same outlook. If I want to get overly bearish here, I want to see that close over 20. I need to see at least a close or two over 20, you know, with confidence. Otherwise, you know, it could just end up like this and you can see it closed directly at 2008 and then rejected super hard. This closed down almost 15% on Friday. So just insane. And then last week as well, I had us maybe going down to 15 area or the 1473. It actually didn't make it all the way down there. It bounced about 1550. So it bounced a little bit early than I expected and then just started blowing through levels. So it blew through the 17s, blew through the 18s and then it instantly skipped up to the 20s once it got over that. So VIX had an insane week. I would just keep the same levels of focus here. Just make sure, you know, if you're bearish, you want to make sure it's holding 16 minimum. I personally probably wouldn't be day trading puts with these kind of levels on the VIX. Day trading puts is better when it gets a little bit more elevated just because this is this can just melt up. It's just so hard to, you know, it's so hard to short the spy, you know, for day trades when it's at these levels. It's just uh, the market can turn on you instantly and people are buying pullbacks when the VIX is this low. So we need, do need to see it getting back over to 20s. If you want to start day trading puts with confidence, you need to see it get over 20s, like I say, every time. 
And then also the 2022 to 2023 average close did drop a little bit down to 24.22. So it dropped from 24.30s to 24.22. That's just because it's been, you know, hanging down here for a good little minute now. We almost had a nice little wake up and it did close over the 50 EMA too, but there just wasn't enough follow through and you can see exactly why. So just make sure it's holding that 1603. If you're bullish, you do want to see getting under that 1603 and also getting under the 1550s. This is kind of just an inflection point. We'll have to see what it does from here. It'd probably need to hold up here. Maybe, you know, if you can get a nice green candle close, that's, you know, something like this or something like this. That'd be, a, you know, maybe a good confirmation to start scaling into puts. Just make sure you're buying time on it. And I say this every week when we're talking about the VIX, we're talking about, you know, the SPY. So this is pretty much a volatility measurement for the S&P 500. And it kind of, I mean, this can kind of give you an idea of what implied volatility is like for, you know, the broad market. But specifically, I'm using the VIX, you know, to trade the SPY and the SPX. So just make sure it's holding these levels. Otherwise, you know, wait for that signal over 20. If you can get over 20, that's, you know, good time to start looking at puts, especially for day trading. And next, we're going into the DXY. So it's kind of unchanged from last week. Let's see what we were at. So Friday, we closed a, well, we closed a little bit lower. But either way, it's still holding the same support. I had the dollar going a little bit higher. I feel like after the FOMC, that might have changed. But either way, it's still kind of holding this breakout here. So it broke out. Also holding your 101.29, the same level we cover every week. That comes from this base over here. And then you have the most recent low at 182, and that's that low right here. So as long as this is holding, dollar's still a little bit elevated, and I feel like, you know, it could spike back up. So you do kind of got to be careful at this area. Either way, currency volatility is pretty low. There's not really a lot going on. It will need to hold up this 182. Literally just the same thing as last week. I feel like I'm just repeating it over and over, but nothing has really changed on the dollar that much. So we do need to just see that holding as well. The 101.29 will need to get reclaimed. As long as that happens, you know, the dollar can go a little bit higher. But you can see it kind of rejected off the 50 EMA area. So it didn't really reach it, you know, spot on, but it did reject off that. In order to go lower for the dollar, it does need to get under that 182. And that'd probably be pretty bullish for the market. So if it can get under that level, I'd feel really good about the market going higher. Uh, that would kind of break this whole structure we've been holding in this whole inflation era that we've had for the last year or two. And if it got under that, that could be a huge statement you know, for the markets. So we'll have to see, might need a little bit more data. I would like to see, you know, if I were to say it could go higher, I would like to see like a candle or two, you know, reacting to these supports, looking nice and bullish, and then maybe it could shoot up and make a bottom pattern here. But right now you can see it's selling off here. Futures are kind of flat, so not really too much going on. As long as this 182 area is holding though, there's still a chance it could bounce. So just make sure that these levels are holding if you want to see the dollar go higher. Otherwise, if you're bullish on the markets, you really do want to see get under that 182. This is kind of like a line in the sand for that for this whole inflation era. So if I can get under that, that'd be great. That'd be pretty bullish for markets. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go ahead and get this chopped up, edited, and recorded. It's probably gonna be out pretty late. I'm recording here at 1:33 in the morning, so power went out. It sucks, but it's okay. We'll go ahead and get this chopped up. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our Extra's YouTube channel. Love you guys, and I'm out.